Well, trouble for Tesla this morning. Shares of the electric car maker fell this week after it missed first quarter delivery estimates. So does this signal a weakening demand for electric cars? To talk about this, we're joined now by auto industry analyst Sundaran Fanaretta. Good morning, Sundaran. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So analysts are describing uh, this stock falling as brutal. What's your reaction to Tesla's stock uh, significant decline? Yeah, look, it's a macroeconomic condition where we're facing decline of 8.5% year over year in what was conceived to be a growing EV market. And look, I think specifically for Canada, what's happening is across the U.S. and Canada, higher interest rates, larger cost of borrowing. You know, people are looking at how do I go ahead and extend the lifetime of my existing gasoline vehicle? Also, in addition to that, insurance costs are going up. We know that. And then, of course, again, charging infrastructure continues to be a main issue many people are thinking about when it comes to range anxiety, the installation and the cost of putting a level two charger in your home. So all of these pieces are coming together to kind of drive this across the entire um, car industry on EVs. Yeah, I know here in BC, the government's trying to address the charging uh, concerns. Uh, the EV market has been hot for a long time. So do you see a significant change in terms of the tide going the wrong way for for EV vehicles? Yeah, I, I really think at the end of the day, the future is going to be fully EV, but I think the transition is going to take a lot longer than people think as we see battery technology continue to improve. The other piece of that is the infrastructure, right? Tesla is in a great position where they have that supercharging network, and that's kind of bolstering that weakness. But across all the other manufacturers as well, if we look at the macroeconomic stuff, for cutting down the production of the F-150 Lightning vehicle. All of these things are happening. So I think what's going to continue to happen is consumers will have to look at other options and choices when they're weighed down by the extreme cost of EV cars versus their comparable internal combustion engine counterparts. And then into the, in addition to that, interest rates being so high in comparison to where they were two or three years ago. So how does that impact the great carbon tax debate? We have an election here coming up in B.C., uh, in the fall. Uh, how does that affect that debate? Yeah, so th that is interesting because we know that the government, federally, provincially, are all putting these mandates in to the point where a lot of these manufacturers are going to be mandated to be selling only EV vehicles by 2035. And so what I think we're, we're going to have to have a discussion about, look, we're going to have to look at what's realistic and have the government and all of our agencies realize it's beyond just having a mandate of manufacturers and what they sell. You have to understand what consumers are looking for and the choices consumers are making in terms of purchasing these vehicles. I myself was in the same situation last year. I decided at that point, hybrid was the option for me now because I felt like I could get the best of both worlds. And the other uh, argument to that as well is, the question is, if you put more hybrid technologies in vehicles, do you get that carbon offset because you have access to that technology to a much greater population where maybe a subset of the buyers today can afford the price tag of a full EV car? It's a great point uh, from your personal experience. So would you advise viewers that maybe hybrid is the way to go for now? Yeah, I think a lot of people, it depends. And that's the thing. If you have a short commute from your home, you own your home, you can go ahead and put an electric charger in there it may make sense to get an EV. But if your schedule is a little bit different, you may have to go longer distances, then EV may not be the right option. You could go with a hybrid where you get kind of the best of both worlds, significantly increased fuel economy. You still have the ability availability to go fill up at a gas station. So I think it really depends on the use cases for different people. But I think more and more as we get technology to go throughout and improve on the battery life, we will go ahead and see an increased adoption of EV, but I think the timeline and the horizon is further out than what a lot of people thought originally. Before I let you go, uh, for investors, do you think Tesla will rebound significantly? So that's a very good debate. If you look at uh, Tesla's market cap, almost half a trillion dollars, $500 billion, it's quite large in comparison to the other manufacturers and uh, automotive manufacturers. Toyota just came out with growth of their hybrid uh, platform 24% in their latest reporting. So I think Tesla is in an interesting position. A lot of their market cap and valuation was on this projected growth that many thought was going to continue to happen. Mm. But we're seeing that not pan out now. And I think what we have to also see is and imagine is that Tesla, just like every other manufacturer, is in the business of selling vehicles. So it's going to be right. interesting to see what the market price is in. We'll see what happens in the, in the coming years. So, so Duran, thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great weekend. Thanks for having me, Jason.